What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another StarCraft Brood War ladder cast. It's time for Zealot versus Rain. This game or series of games was played on the 8th of August. 8-8, eight, eight, an auspicious day, right before the SSL qualifiers. So both of these players should be at the absolute top of their games in this series. I'm really looking forward to it. Lots of high octane play and some br big brain maneuvers from Rain is what I'm hoping for. You know, Rain is one of those guys who you never quite know if he's on the level to take a ASL championship, but he could be. He always could be. And that's something you just cannot discount. We're going to be throwing down a gateway in the main here. That is an interesting choice from Rain. Sending out the scout after gateway. Second gateway about to go down. This is an interesting way to open the series. Both these players fully aware of each other. Rain knows this is Zealot. Zealot knows this is Rain, but no acknowledgement in the chat whatsoever we've got four games to go for go through so i'll keep an eye out to see if there is any chatter going on try to get that translated for you guys this is the moment to get some good practice in for both these players and maybe get a bit of a mental edge for what could be a series in the ssl now we don't have that gas coming online just yet. And Zealot has sent a drone all the way out here on the map. He has not sent a secondary drone to throw down a third hatchery. So I'm a little bit wondering what's going to happen here. Zealot is sending that drone now. No, he still hasn't sent it out. This is a bit interesting. We've got... Okay, there it is. The gas goes down. He's going to come up this ramp. Just now he sees it's double gateway so he will not be sending out that drone now uh, to go ahead and take a third hatchery but i'm a little bit surprised that he wasn't already sending it out like sometimes you'll send that drone and then right as you see the double gateway you will go ahead and retreat just send your drone back to your main and and just not build that first or that third hatchery excuse me but here he didn't even think about throwing down that third. He's actually going to put one down at the natural. And I'm a little bit interested in Rain's build here. He went double gateway. He built three zealots. And then he kind of halted zealot production for a bit. He got the gas and the cybernetic score up. And now he's going to push in. He's going to poke in here. I doubt that he's going to commit to this. But he's going to make sure that he's forcing enough links. And then he's going to go ahead and switch into Corsair, I believe. We should have a Stargate coming down. And this is a little bit earlier than you would expect a Stargate off of a two gateway pressure play. When you see these, these two gateways right away this quickly. And you ex you're, you're just going to expect like non-stop zealots and a ton of pressure. You might even throw down a sunken colony in order to kind of shore up the defenses here and make sure that you can drone safely. He almost gets a couple of kills on these zealots, but basically all of them are still alive. This is actually a really dire situation now for Zealot. He's popping three drones here at the natural. And there are five zealots that are about to walk into his main base. Okay, he gets us around on some of these. One drone has gone down so far. Pretty good drilling overall from Zealot. Second, third drone go down. So three drones do fall. But you know, he was only producing drones during this it makes one extra set of ling that's barely going to be enough to actually deal with this zealot and you know what at the end of that it's not too bad it's really not too bad i thought that zealot was going to lose a lot more than that but the drill on the ramp was very well done we've got this zealot plus dragoon move out he's thinking about going across the map with that starts another couple of zealots here before heading out that's going to get spotted by this Overlord. I don't think he can snipe the Overlord, though. That should get over the high ground here just in time. And he should be able to handle this no problem. We've got 
one corsair okay the corsair is going to help out to deal with that the dragoon going to add its dps to get rid of that as quickly as possible three hydras in the natural more are popping out he's a little bit supply block right now two more overlords on the way but i'm not worried about zealot dying right now or losing any more overlords aside from this one over here he may end up losing that he's got 20 drones to the 22 probes and he's on two bases so really the fact that you're on two bases right now it makes such a big difference in the amount of mining that you can get um having like one drone per patch at two bases compared to you know two or three probes per patch at one base rain is mining a lot less a lot less than what zealot is right now and zealot has the option to put on pressure it seems like he wants to go with that option groove spines on the way here hydra range is about to come into play we do not have a dark archon a, a shrine here a templar archives excuse me the dark shrine that is from starcraft 2 it's been a million years since i played that game i don't know why that popped into my head but here we go hydra's making their way to the front here there are uh, a couple of cannons about to finish warping in. we've got two already a third and a fourth are just about done let's see if we can actually punch through here so he may end up losing this overlord gonna pull some hydras over there to defend that but that's a little bit annoying for now seems like he might have messed up his rallies he's gonna go for it i think yeah this is definitely a kill for zealot if he pulls this off properly that is not very many zealots we've got two more that are about to pop he actually starts a robotics facility i think he realizes that he's gonna be in trouble he i don't think he thinks that he can actually get uh templar to the front here a storm in time yeah oh god this is bad zealot is probably gonna bust through here this is looking really strong from him we've got a few hydras going down but the amount of hydras that are going to be coming across the map here I, I think he can bust this position one cannon goes down a second about to fall here two zealots are on the way but he can start to snipe these cannons that are just in range as soon as he picks those off he's gonna dive back in he's gonna go after this cannon he will get this the play here from rain the kind of sneaky two gate pressure into a very fast corsair it seemed like an interesting idea but zealot was all over it he absolutely held with flying colors here on the ramp against the five zealots you would have expected you know five six seven drones to go down he only lost three and he was making all drones behind that so he was able to just get that economy going without too much of a hassle without too much difficulty there you know a lesser player would have allowed those zealots to walk up into the uh, main base and then you know fight with the drones in kind of a precarious situation but he just pulls everything he gets on top of those zealots he takes the best trade possible leverages his good economic position to bust this natural and he takes out rain really impressed with this first game from zealot but we're gonna jump into game number two see what rain for has for us coming up next here we are in game number two rain in the bottom right hand corner zealot in the top left and guys i've been playing a little bit of micro uh, practice maps uh, there's a new one that i just got from love snow that i was playing a whole bunch of games on and i actually really enjoy playing uh, micro practice maps but there was an insane uh, practice scenario where it was like five drones versus a zealot and a probe and you couldn't lose one drone you had to kill the probe and the zealot maybe six drones something like that it definitely wasn't nine it was more like six and oh my goodness is it difficult to get the zealot to dance when it's being controlled by an ai it is crazy hard to get the zealots or to dance like we saw out of zealot in that last game it was done almost perfectly by him getting the drones to fire as well this is one thing to get the the zealots to dance but then also to get the the drones to attack during that it it's tough it's really really tough and it, it's surprisingly tough uh considered considering how easy it kind of looks from when these pro players are doing it it's it's crazy crazy hard guys and i even had 
uh, a professional player in my ear telling me about how to do it. Um, if you guys know Nesh, he was uh, giving me some tips on how to make it happen. He's not a Zerg player, but still, it was crazy, crazy hard. So the fact that I just was doing that <laughs> kind of uh, leans into my, ex my own experience here a little bit. Uh, and he just gives me a better sort of understanding or appreciation for Zealot in that last game. Now, this game, we're not going to have the same sort of situation play out. Instead, this time, Rain has gone for a much more normal strategy, op opting to go for a gateway here in the natural. We'll throw down that Nexus. Zealot making its way over here towards the third. And a single Ling trying to make its way maybe into this main. No, he's just going to see the gateway and back off here. I don't think that third has been spotted. More Lings are popping out now. We've got the gas done, but nothing has been mined. You can tell because even if you mine up to 100, you will have a little bit extra. Is that a mistake from Zealot or is he thinking about doing something sneaky? I'm not sure. Is generally, if you're going to make the gas, you're definitely going to want to saturate that as soon as possible. Maybe realizing that that's a gateway, he understands that he doesn't need the gas as quickly. Okay, he's actually going into Hydroden now. Um, you kind of want the gas as soon as possible if you're going to go for that Hydroden because you need to get uh, Hydra's range and speed as quickly as you can now. Blocking these zealots from get, getting into the main base is absolutely priority number one, and it feels like he's already kind of failed that. This one zealot will definitely make it in, and the other two will get on top of the ramp as well, which is a bit of a shock. Now, you know, fighting here is all well and good, but we'll see Rain in just a moment pull back from this position with his last zealot and scout the main, and he will. He sees the Hydralis den, and he knows everything. Yeah, he completely knows everything. I wonder what Zealot will do from here. Will he just build one Hydra or, you know, two, three Hydras and try to stop the Corsair from dealing any damage? Or is he going to still go on with this? Is he still going to try and make this work? Try to Hydra bust here. Got a Photon Cannon at the front. We do not have a Corsair. That is interesting. No Stargate here at all. It's best not to build a Corsair if you think the opponent is going to Hydra bust you. It's possible to just build uh, gateways and try to get Zealot speed as fast as you can. Uh, that can be a good way to deal with it. Get a couple extra gateways. Go to like three, four gateways and just try to um, get Zealot speed out as quickly as possible. Try to fight it that way. You could also go for... A Robo. There it is. Robo here in the natural. He's going to be going for Reaver to try and stop this. Um, it's just a very solid way to deal with. Oh god, he had to cancel his cannon here just to get the Dragoon back into the main so he can try to kill this Overlord. It was so close. 8 HP left on that. We'll finish it off. The Reaver comes a lot quicker than Storm is what I was trying to say is that you can... Go for this Reaver when you think that there's not going to be enough time to get Storm online to deal with a Hydra Bust. And as long as the Reaver pops out before every cannon is dead, you should be able to hold this. There's not going to be that many Hydras coming across. It's a lot, but it's just a straight up 973, I think. Yeah, pretty much. It's like 964. Same thing as 973. So Zealot. He's going to be pulling the trigger on the 973. Let's see if he can get in here in time. We do have the robotic support bay. This is not really what I was expecting out of Zealot versus Rain, honestly. This is very, very basic what we're seeing right now. I love what Zealot does, though. He's probably going to set a, put a second line here, get a perfectly set up row of Hydras, and now he's going to go. Sends the Lings in first, runs straight up. Kills one of the cannons. He guns down a second cannon here really quickly. And he only lost three Hydras. Okay, four Hydras end up going down. Now he's opened up the position to start to kill the Forge. But the problem is this Reaver's on the way. It's about uh, a quarter of the way here. Quarter of the way done. Another Hatchery comes online. So we do have a potential transition now from Zealot. 
He's building six drones at home. He's going to kill this wall. He's going to deny the upgrade. And, well, I think this is actually a pretty okay thing for Zealot. You know, he hasn't really overcommitted to this play. Then when the Reaver comes out, he can just back away. He can just back up. He's got the Lair coming. He can spread Overlords around. He knows that there's no Corsairs coming. Because the Corsair would have been out by now. Spread your Overlords around here. Get lots of vision going. And then you should be able to see a shuttle coming in. Once that first shuttle comes out, it'll either be one massive push from Rain with the shuttle uh, combined with the army. Or he's going to come and try to harass you. And as long as you have everything spread out and lots of vision everywhere to make sure that you can see. See, he's even sending the overlords here right away. He's going to go ahead and spread these out. I don't know where these are heading, actually. They really should be heading down to here and here. Um, so that he can get some vision over all these areas. There's that one heading down to this area. Get one up here as well. And he should be pretty golden. There's this spire on the way. We've got 34 drones already. He's adding on a few more. Um, probably doesn't need to go north of 40. But 45 is like all you could ever ask for on three bases. You just know that it's going to be something aggressive here out of rain with the reaver play. There's really nothing else you can do. You just kind of have to go for it. Because it's not going to scale super well later on into the game. Like you're not going to have some massive army of uh, zealot dragoon with you know four reavers that's usually not the case we're not getting uh speed here either he will be switching into templar archives and so eventually we'll, we'll we will have that uh templar army but as long as zealot holds this first push and keeps most of his drones alive he should be okay five overlords on the way did he get supply blocked no he just wants to open up a huge amount of supply. Look at that. He's already got 20 open supply. 20 Hydralis can be made right now, but he's going to open up five more Overlords worth of supply. Let's see how high it jumps as those finish up. Six Dragoons on the way. Is Rain playing PvP right now? Dragoon and Reaver is going to be the choice. I don't know. I feel like Zealot should be able to handle this. 11 Muta is coming as well. Ooh, that's deadly. That is deadly. No Archons, guys. Let me remind you. No Archons at all. He's looking towards his fourth base. He's got Scourge out already. If he just comes in and finds this shuttle, as everything starts to move out, he is just going to crush. He is absolutely going to crush. So... Let's see. Plus one attack on the way. That is an interesting choice. Very rare that you ever see flyer attacks upgraded first in a ZVP. It's almost always flyer armor and almost never flyer attacks. And especially not first. More gateways coming online here. How many we got? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Typical standard number uh, for a Protoss player. I thought he might have a little bit less, but he's just gone into... Because he can make Reavers at the same time, but he's just gone into... Oh gosh, he's going to scout this. He sees all the Mutas. Mutas were thinking about diving the main, it looks like. Maybe not such a good idea anymore, but he is going for it. Okay, he's just going to go for the main. Let's see how this uh, pans out. He's definitely going to kill that cannon real quick. Start to murder these probes as well. Probe's going to be pulled now. Um, will he target down one of these buildings? No, just gonna rotate here over towards the natural. No, okay. Just killing one dragoon and then backing off. Can fly just over top of this. All right, nice try with the storm there, but Zealot just gonna dodge it. Another storm can go down. Ooh, that was a very nice storm right there. Killing a lot of these. But coming back in, killing a few more probes is Zealot. Dealing a lot of damage now. This is starting to look pretty bad for Rain. You can see that just this unorthodox play is not panning out for him. The Zealot is outdoing him in pretty much every way at this point. Coming back in, dealing a little more damage, picking off a few more probes here and there. Finally, these probes are going to get back to mining, but there's been a serious disruption 
in overall mining for rain this game and it's just been absolutely no hindrance at all to the production of zealot zealot is just cranking away on all of these bases he's keeping his money very low and you can see he's a 20 supply advantage now he is a bit supply blocked at the moment he's liable to lose a few more overlords as this everything pushes forward so he can't really build anything right now he's not actually building overlords he's instead trying to come in here and force out some storms he gets right on top of these reavers storms at the back here covering a lot of these hydras but there's still plenty of hydras left over and i think we're just about out of storms if he dives on top of these reavers and kills them off he should be good to go he kills the reavers everything dies rain is gonna lose his entire army looks like he will pick off this hatchery at 12 but that army is just about irreplaceable at this point we are getting very low on money 300 minerals on a lot of these patches right now the zealots are gonna get cleaned up another hatchery can go down no problem and we're not close to mining out for zella it's a it's a it's close but it's not as close as rain rain is gonna mine, mine out first a hundred percent just the way that this matchup goes and his army is dismal so small another seven mutas on the way right now by the way seven mutas coming up here in just a moment so he will have a repeat force of hydra and mutilus to try and snipe down the next army of rain and i mean rain he's trying to put together to put together this follow-up army but he is just struggling so hard could he potentially take a third base maybe but it's gonna be incredibly tough whoa he gets his dragoons out that's not what i was expecting I'm not expecting those dragoons to get home safe probably they're not going to i guess a lot of mutas coming up his mutas are taking some damage and you know getting revealed here but what are you gonna do about that really truly just fight with the dragoons and try to cast storms well as if you cast all the storms then you're in the same dismal situation here we go sniped and one more well a lot of the mutas do go down but now there's no zero templar to actually throw down storm we got one here in the natural one more just popped out they don't even have energy for any of these storms now some zealots make their way over here what are the upgrades on this by the way one one but we've got two zero here for zealot and zealot could go to hive but he's not even choosing to do so he's just making sure that he's gonna get his other bases online securing his future here while continuously making it hard for his opponent to go ahead and get that third base online as long as he denies this he will win this game I'm gonna fly in here pick off a probe or two look for some templar fly into the main make a bit of a distraction and the hydras are gonna come in oh my goodness what a storm there one two three four five six seven eight hydras went down to that storm my goodness another storm gonna come down over here but the uh, mutas are making some progress and the hydras on this side are actually breaking their way in as well a few dragoons are going to be able to hold this area for now but a lot of them have gone down and the main base is no longer mining we've got the hatchery here getting kind of low but uh zealot i mean he did multiple expansions so he's gonna be fine gg is called rain taps out another win here for zealot not at all what i was expecting from this series but rain is not interested in playing normal it seems he is pulling out some fancy tricks and zealot i mean he identified what was going on he made the transition exactly when he should and rain was not willing to risk sending out the reavers to try and get some harassment damage he wanted to keep those back at home to aid with the push and this fly in with all the mutas just dealing all the damage in the main base and slowing down the product it just gave him so much time to put together that hydralisk army to surround and eventually murder all of those dragoons and take out the reavers and everything all in one foul swoop now we still have two more games to go i hope that we'll see a better one out of rain let's jump into that third game see what we get all right game number three we've got zealot 
top center on Apocalypse. Center right is going to be Rain. And Zealot making it look like he should be the one going into ASL. And that Rain won't make it through the qualifiers. But things are not always as they seem in these ladder matches. And playing in front of an audience and playing for stakes, much different than just playing on the ladder. Basically for funning it right now is Rain and... This is a guy who, when he's playing for stakes, when he's under those pressure, under that pressure in those pressure situations, is actually when he shines. I know it seems backwards, but this is true. This is how this guy flourishes is really under pressure. And he's going to be opening, opening with the Nexus first now. He drops the Forge. Of course, an overlord has detected everything. He's seen the build. He sees the Nexus first. What's the plan here? Are we gonna... What are we gonna do? We, do, we can't skip spawning pool. We can't skip spawning pool because the problem therein is that a cannon rush could really hurt us. <clears throat> and also the spawning pool. I think he threw it down before he actually saw everything with the overlord. So... That's a little bit rough. Zealot, how is he going to leverage this situation? Or will he just play it kind of from behind here? Make no lings and just try to grab a third base. Try to play it out normally. He's going to get the gas. 2 minutes 40 seconds. Pretty interesting stuff from Zealot. He's been doing this every game. And... Like 2 minute 30 is a timing that I've learned that if you get the gas at 2 minute 30, you can afford to build, uh, you can afford to go 973 with Ling Speed, Hydra Speed, and Hydra Range. You can get all of those things at a pretty like good timing where you can actually bust with the Hydras, but it's a little bit tough. It's a little bit tight in the economy you have to do proper boosting and all that good stuff you got the hydrogen coming down now so with the two minute 40 gas i'm not sure that he can afford all those things but he can definitely get a very quick hydralis bus to your front now i mean with mini in here and no lings out to actually deny this scout he's just doing this directly in the face of rain almost as like a big middle finger to him actually because like showing him that he's not afraid he doesn't care uh he can do the hydra bust and he can transition he can just outplay you with the hydra bust you have to respect it um and yeah rain i mean he harasses a little bit but we haven't even built a single set of links we're right into hydras right now hydras are on the way and we haven't even built one ling yet this drone getting harassed pretty heavily Good response here from Zealot to keep that alive. We're at what? Nine, seven. And what do we have? Three over here? Yes, we do. The fourth drone on the way. That'll help for the transition if he decides that there that is necessary. One Zealot making it over here towards this third base. May be able to get a kill. No, looks like it won't. Zealot going to go ahead and hide over here. And that could potentially come back in as the bust is occurring. Try to get a couple kills. Or he might send it all the way back home to just kind of assist in the wall. That's actually what it's looking like now. He sees the Zealot. The Hydras are going to group back up. Three more on the way. One more drone coming as well. So he adds an extra hatchery. There's a potential here for just a full-on transition from Zealot. Uh, I'm not sure if that's the way he wants to go with this, but it's kind of looking that way now with that extra hatchery coming down. This course they're going to go across the map and actually find that. Now, there are things that you can do here as uh, you could fake this transition. You get the fourth hatchery going and then you just continue to build hydras and you just bust. That is something that could happen here. And Rain may get in and see that this extra hatchery is coming down and there's a few more drones here and misinterpret that as Zealot just completely switching over 
into a more normal game, into a macro game. But he sees some more Hydra popping. That's pretty big information right now. Seeing that coming out is really important. He's added on more cannons. He's at four already. He's going to add on a fifth. I just range is now done. If he snipes this one cannon, he can get the forge. But he doesn't have much time before plus one is done. There are two courses out. Neither of them have any kills. He's going to kill the gateway here. Will he dive on the cannon? It looks like not, but he's still building hydras. Yeah, Zell is going to go for this all in. Um, you can see the Templar Archives on the way right now. That's going to be quick, but it's not going to be quick enough to stop this bust. The two Corsairs come back in. They see more Hydras. That's a really big scout right now. We should see more cannons on route here on uh, in the production. Even more cannons should be coming. Even more cannons. We need more cannons. There's another one. More. We need more. We need to stop mining this gas, actually. This gas mining. This gas is a mistake. I think, in my humble opinion. Um, we don't need gas. Like, yeah, we need Templar. And we need Storm. But we don't need that much gas. I don't think. Okay, he just barely gets it out. He barely has enough gas. Does he pull off now? We need money. We need minerals. We need cannons. This is all we need right now. Five more Hydras on the way. He's timed it out here. He knows exactly when this is going to come online. And he's ready to dive. Here we go. He's going for it. Diving on top. Gonna kill off a bunch of these zealots. Zealots are just buying that time there at the front. Letting a lot of these hydras die. The probes come out here. Some of the cannons start to go down, but this is a pretty good hold so far from Rain. <clears throat> Six, seven drones in production. Uh-oh. All right, Zealot, I think he went too far. I think he's finally gonna get punished here. You know, he's been doing these hydralist busts and they've been working over and over again. But I think he's just taken it a little bit too far this game. He's not going to be able to win straight up with one of these Hydra Busts. He's going to be in a very bad position this time after the Hydralis Bust finish. Now he has Lurker Aspect on the way and an Evolution Chamber. But this is the big problem. I hear a lot of people say, you know, oh, Z uh, so you can just hide your bust and then be completely fine if they transition. Um, not totally the case. There is, of course, the fact that you will not have uh, upgrades rolling when you're doing a hydra bust like this. And as you can see, zealot are the the zealots of rain have plus one, and they're about to have plus one armor. We just started plus one attack, so it's going to be two upgrades ahead. And I don't know if he can hold this front. Oh, he's at 68 of 68. Four overloads on the way. He really wants to make lurkers right now. He's going to try and contain and just hold back rain as long as he can. But I just, I don't know if he's going to be able to do it. He's adding on a bunch of lurkers. If he gets these lurkers out and in position, he will buy some time. That's a very important thing to note. He will be able to buy some time if he gets the lurkers here uh, in position in time we do not have a robo this is so big the fact that we don't have a robo right now here is massive now rain gonna come out he's gonna see the lurker eggs the lurkers go ahead and burrow but the zealots are just gonna run by and that's gonna create a problem here for zealot because now he's got to worry about those running around the map these zealots are gonna run around the map he could leave the lurkers here and send these hydras back home but then that would leave a big potential for an actual bust out here. Now, he doesn't know that there's no robo just yet, but he should suspect a big... Oh my god, he's going to go drop from this position. That is wild to me. He's just going to go straight into drop and try to win with a really fancy lurker drop. He's going to try and like lurker drop right here and kill all the probes at the space. Or maybe come around here, sneak in and just kill every probe now there are a lot of cannons so that's probably not gonna work but i i kind of like the idea here from zealot now high ground he's holding the high ground with all these lurkers he's not covering the natural completely but using the high ground instead 
I think it's a reasonable decision considering the circumstances that he finds himself in. He's really, you know, holding this on a budget. This is like a, a, a very budget uh, containment here. And it's not going to last for long. You can see the zealots are just, or the, the hydras are not here because they're over there chasing the zealots. This is, this is kind of a cascading issue right now for zealot, right? These are, are yeah, it's getting confusing because there's zealots and then there's zealot. Zealot, the player, has a cascading issue because he allowed those zealots to sneak out. He wasn't able to build the lurkers right when the lurker upgrade was done because he was supply blocked. That allowed the zealots to get out on the map, which forced the hydras to chase them around. And because they were forced to chase the zealots around, this army was able to break through his little budget contain there. So it's a, a tough situation now that we find ourselves in here at Zealot, but he's gonna load up a bunch of units into these overlords and go try to hit the main base, it looks like, while Rain is attacking into his natural. He's got some lurkers over here on the left-hand side. He's gotta bring them to bear now. We've got two store or two Templar here. They have a lot of storm. Great storm on some of these Hydras. Looks like the natural will actually be breached. We don't have a real wall here at the natural. So he will be able to bust through there with just a little bit of time. I'll go picture in picture here as the drop unfolds here in the main base. These lurkers are going to get huge volleys on a lot of these probes. Not as many kills as I was expecting, honestly. I was expecting more there. Um, and we don't have like a an extra overlord going to drop here at the natural uh, in order to pick that off. So that's a little bit unfortunate to kill all the probes as they transferred over here. That's a little bit unfortunate. There's too much going on right now, I think, for Zealot. He's trying to build Hydras desperately to try and hold on, and he's trying to do this drop at the same time. It looks like he's not going to be effective enough here, and Rain will take this victory. That was kind of a crazy game. That's what I was more expecting out of these two players. Like, Rain playing really straight up, Zealot going a little bit crazy with the cheese, and Rain just kind of figuring it out weathering the storm and then closing the game out this is uh, my expectation but i don't know if that's what we're going to get in game number four guys we've got one last game to go well let's see what zealot and rain end up pulling out let's jump into that last game so the final game of the series now with rain down here in the bottom right hand corner zealot in the top left and you know, some people may say that that was a pretty cheesy play, what Zealot did in that last game, but I honestly really like his mentality. I think that Zealot is the type of player who thinks on his feet. He knows exactly what he should do and what kind of position he's in. And he thinks of the absolute highest win percent chance play and he goes for it i i gotta respect it gotta respect it he's looking at his situation in that last game he says well there's probably no way i can win this but what if i drop into his main like maybe there's a chance and so he finds that highest win percent possible i you know i think there were a small mistakes there that he might have been able to do better like Keeping the lurkers out in front of the natural, maybe not the best idea. That budget containment really didn't do much for him. If he had brought those lurkers home, maybe, uh, right as the Protoss army is moving out, just like suddenly unburrow and just run away, go all the way back home and then burrow them with the uh, hydras there at his natural. And then maybe do something like try to snipe the observer that is probably the highest percent win chance that you can have right you just look for the observer snipe if you snipe the observer you buy yourself like an extra 30 seconds or 40 seconds or even maybe even longer as the next observer is coming across the map and all the meanwhile your lurkers are dealing a bunch of damage in the main base Maybe you kill a bunch of probes. If you split the lurkers and dump some of them into the natural, maybe you kill a huge amount of the probes. You could make things pretty interesting with a play like that. But, you know, Zealot, he tried his best. Now we're here in game number four. And what do we got? It's Rain doing 
a cheesy cheesy two gate center map pretty rough news here for Zell. just gonna throw down a creep colony in his natural and he opened with the 12 hatch so it's pretty unlikely that he'll actually be able to hold this like it's it's tough it is really really tough he's gonna run two links by maybe go and try to hit uh the main base potentially of rain i mean he could try it try to get in here and start killing some probes um we have a shield battery on the way one ling dies unfortunately egg is being targeted right now is he gonna make a sunken in the main he does a pretty good sunken right there i gotta say that is a pretty decently placed sunken and that sunken will do a lot of work here for our boy zealot now with the drone drill you can cover that pretty darn well one zealot pops out here at the gateways but the second gets blocked right as it was about to pop by the way that is rough not going to be able to finish that one zealot but zealot doesn't go across the map and deal any damage so the probes are just working away fine here we could have the probe come back and just build another pylon here this hatcher is going to go down he did slip out a drone i'm not sure if you guys saw that but he did slip out a drone and so he's going to go ahead and build a base up in top right which is an interesting decision here he slowed down the gateways a little bit Eventually that pylon will finish though. What's he gonna do to get down this ramp? I'm not too sure. Should he drill this? He's getting gas. He's not getting speed yet. Zealot here on the ramp just being so annoying with the shield battery as well. It's so frustrating. Some links on the map. Three of them gonna make their way into this main. Let's see what kind of damage they can get done. Links here in the middle get picked off. That's unfortunate. A little bit of miss micro there from Zealot is really going to hurt him. One Zealot here in the main. And we can start to build cannons soon too. Ah, he's going to go ahead and find that in the top right. That sucks. He's going to see that in the top right. And all Rain really needs to do now is just rally the next two Zealots to the top right. And he should be able to kill that cannon in the main deals with all the other bad situations and zealots here could even try to push in we've got lings and ling speed on the way but that's not looking good it is certainly not looking good some more lings over here gonna be made and most of the zealots actually leave to go to top right that's not what i was expecting i thought we would just see more zealots produced and sent over here um, because he will drill this ramp. Here we go. Gonna try and make a play out of it. Trying to drill the ramp right now. Looks like he will lose the drone. Oh, this is just too tough. This is just too tough. I don't think he's gonna be able to do it. He drills past these zealots. This sent another drone out on the map, I guess. Maybe try to take another base somewhere else. I don't know. This is looking so bad. We've got zealots over by the pylon. We've got a hatchery in the main base of rain this is hilarious too bad there's a cannon if there wasn't a cannon maybe there's some sort of hope but he's gonna try something this is again the thinking i like from zealot where he's like all right i'm probably at zero percent chance of winning this game if i try to play any sort of normal way like what's the craziest weirdest thing that i could throw out that will slightly increase my win percent chance and this is it hatchery in the main so you're gonna start is he gonna start making yeah he's gonna start making sunken <laughs> sunken colonies oh boy that is funny one sunken on the way can he actually see this yet yep he sees it <laughs> links are stuck over here that sucks you would really like to get these links out to go down here and help out this area here we go sunken colonies this is hilarious i think we're gonna have maybe rain just pulled it like just go in he's got 12 13 14 zealots 14 zealots my boys 14 zealots versus how many lings is this uh not even 14 i don't think 
Oh my gosh. Well, one sunken colony ain't gonna save you here, Zealot, I'm afraid to say. That is a lot of Zealots. And yeah, that will end up going down. It's, it's a funny thought, right? It's a funny thought to go ahead and start building sunken colonies in your opponent's main. Kind of hilarious. Kind of hilarious decision making here at the end of this game. You can't fault Zealot for it though. This is a very annoying play to deal with. Center two gate is really rough, especially when they send extra probes. I come up against this a lot actually on the ladder is when they'll do center two gate or two gate in their natural and they'll just rally Zealots at you and send like four or five probes. And it is so hard to hold. It is very all in, but as soon as they control the bottom of your ramp, you have to start doing things like what Zealot was doing. Getting a drone out in the middle of the map to go ahead and, uh, you know, snag a base in one corner, try to hide something somewhere, maybe hide a hatchery inside their opponent's base. Like there's just not a lot of good options for Zerg once you lose control of your ramp. It's, it's really, really tough to find a way back into that game, but uh, all the Protoss really needs to do is just get cannons back at home and keep making Zealots and do exactly what Rain was doing, which was just eventually get into a... eventually get into Corsair. That's it, really. Just get a Corsair out. And then you fly in, you start killing Overlords. They're not going to have anti-air to deal with that. And even if they do, that's literally all they're going to have. Um, and so... It's a pretty easy win from there. Good job by Rain. He gets uh, two wins back. So two to two between these two. Unfortunately, we don't have a tiebreaker game to find out who's the uh, the winner of this little series uh, between Rain and Zealot. But hey, it is what it is. We had some fun. Hope you guys enjoyed this match. And I'll see you in the next one.